The Vancouver Canucks continue to look at players to add ahead of the trade deadline and their link to a defenseman in the East. I'll get into that later on this episode, but before I start, I just want to say to the 98% of you guys that aren't subscribed, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'll be here all season long, giving you updates from all around the Canucks, from trades, rumors, prospect breakdowns, game recaps, anything you can think of. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is the Canucks looking at Rasmus Ristolainen. Now, this did come out today due from Anthony DeMarco. He said the Leafs and Canucks are two main teams I've heard tied to Ristolainen. NHL insider David Pagnota from the fourth period did back this up and says, As for the Canucks, while well, nothing seems intimate, I'm told they spoke with Philly this week about their D. Now, the Philadelphia Flyers do have a lot of defensemen that seem like they're on the block and on their way out. Rasmus Ristolainen being one. There's multiple guys. Sean Walker. There's so many options, but it seems like Ristolainen is the one that's drawing a lot of attention, especially from Vancouver. So when you do look at Rasmus Ristolainen, he's six foot four, 221 pounds. He's a right-handed shot, right-handed D. Former eighth overall pick by the Buffalo Sabres, 29 years old, and currently has a cap at a 5.1 million. Now, when you do look at Ristolainen's stats. Rissalainen, who wasn't really known for his defense in the previous years, and he kind of has picked this up since joining Philadelphia, and especially when John Tortorella took over this team. But Rissalainen is a big body, 162 hits last season, 142 blocks. If you just kind of look at the hits, I mean 230, 193, 203, 235, and it keeps going back. When you do look at blocks, 142, 125, 68, and 49 games, 121, 111, 161. You can see the trend here that he's a big body. I mean, six foot four. This guy knows how to use his body, especially physicality wise. Now, in the previous season, especially with Buffalo, he was more known as a defense or offensive defenseman. Sorry, 41 points, 45, 41, 43. And since he joined Philly, he kind of took a step back offensively. He hasn't been given as many chances on Philadelphia offensively as he was on Buffalo, which hence is why it has dropped a tiny bit. But like I said, he has picked up his defensive game. He can still put up points. I mean, last year in 74 games, he did have 20 points. Yes, the plus minus on his entire career doesn't look pretty. But the biggest thing with this is plus minus is more of a team thing. I don't overly like looking at it. I mean, if you're negative 70 in a season, yes, that is not great. But overall, I wouldn't look into that too much. Now, when you do look at Ristolainen, and he is currently on a five-year deal. He's in year two of this, making $5.1 million per year. So he does still have three more years after the season at a cap at of 5.1. Do I think Ristolainen's is worth 5.1? It's a bit of a tough bargain, especially for a team that might go into a tiny bit of a cap crunch. A team that has a lot of UFAs that needs to be signed, RFAs, a lot of pieces to bring back. It's kind of hard to bring back a, just say, $5.1 million player and not really move anything out. But this is where I think Philadelphia could really look at retaining, maybe use the second team, maybe the San Jose Sharks, Anaheim Ducks, onload a prospect, maybe a pick to them, just to retain some. If you can get this guy in at, say, $3.5 million for the next three seasons after this, I think you can really look at that and eat that contract without being worried about the next couple of years. Now, the biggest question with this is, yes, okay, he's big. He can hit. He can block shots. He can still put up points. And if you can get him at 3.5, yes, that is good. But does he really just fit on this Vancouver team? Now, when you do look at just the defense appearance right now for Vancouver, everyone knows this. Quinn Hughes, Hironic. Ian Cole, Tyler Myers, Nikita Sodorov, and Nola Juleson. Now, these are the pairings without a guy like Carson Soucy within the lineup. So, you do need to kind of think of it with him here as well. But, bringing in a guy like Ristolainen, maybe this is where the Canucks kind of have rumors about maybe shopping Sodorov. Maybe you flip a guy like Sodorov, you put Carson Soucy back in. You can slide Tyler Myers down into the four, uh, third pairing with a guy like Soucy. And then rock a second pairing of a guy like Ian Cole and Ristolainen. Like I said, yes, it is a lot of money. Depending on how much you need to give up, if this is moving maybe a first and a prospect, I don't really think the Canucks should make a move like this. But if you can get him for cheap, if you can get him retained, why not go all in, stack up on your defense, and just really make that push? As I said, Hughes, Hironic, I would not touch this. I think this is one of the best pairings, if not in the league. You have a guy like Ian Cole that you could play with Ristolainen. Maybe you run Susie, Ristolainen, 
trade off Sidorov to get a couple of pieces. Maybe Sidorov is a guy going back in this trade with Philly, and you can ultimately just let Philly flip him to someone else. And then you can put a guy like Todd Myers down into the third pair. So the big thing with this is, can they make it worth cap-wise? Now, I'm sure you guys have seen the screenshot I use it in quite a lot of videos. As I said before, there's a lot of RFAs, UFAs. I mean, headlined by guys like Pedersen, newly acquired Elias Lindholm. There's so many pieces, Heronic, Tyler Myers. But Tyler Myers is where I kind of want to take a stop and look. Tyler Myers is making $6 million this season. He is a UFA going into next year. So if you do bring in a guy like Rissa Line and he can come in, fill a Tyler Myers role, maybe not as many brain day, dead plays as he has been good recently. But you get Rissa Line in at 29 years old. If you can get him at, like I said, 3.5, 4 million for the next couple of seasons, you basically need to look at this just kind of filling that Tyler Myers void. You let him walk, maybe resign him to a cheaper contract, and just let this contract kind of fill itself out. As I've said, he can hit, he can block shots, he can put up points. Is this a lot to give up for a guy like this? Maybe. If you can get him for cheap, do you go out and get him? I think the Canucks are really going to have a look. Maybe Sean Walker's the cheaper option that they might go for as a rental style player. But it's really down to what the Canucks want to do. We can tell they're all in, and I really do have a feeling the Canucks can go deep this year, and maybe this is the year. So what's your guys' thoughts? Do you think they should go out and get a guy like Tyler Myers, or a story of Ristolainen, maybe trade Tyler Myers in a deal like this? Or do you think they should kind of stay clear of locking up more salary and just kind of focus on getting a rental, focus on the cup, and just ultimately try to win it for the city of Vancouver? Anyways, that's it for this episode of Canucks Digest. Like I said, if you enjoyed this, make sure to go down, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, share this with your friends. We'll be here all season long, and take care.